Good morning. Welcome to morning prayer at St. John's Episcopal Church in Bangor, Maine. Today we have an interesting saint. Most saints are interesting, of course, but um, this is Leo the Great. He was born around 400 um, at a time when the Western Roman Empire was almost in shambles. Um, that was because of a whole, um, an onslaught of various barbarian invasions, um, an inefficient economic and political system, and um, just general uh, chaos and internal warfare and um, corruption. Nevertheless, he was able to get a, a decent education and he was ordained a deacon. And his job was to look after church possessions and the um, also managing the grain dole, which was very important to keep people fed and happy. And, um, and also administered finances. In the year 440, he was elected Pope, even though he was absent at the time on a, a mission to Gaul. He was a great preacher. Uh, we have we know that because there are 96 sermons still uh, in existence, and they deal with various things like doctrine and um, encouraging the giving of alms and um, dealt with the various heresies. Um, his strong point as Pope was as an organizer, just as he had been as a deacon. He was able to trim the sails of uh, various bishops who were overreaching in their authority and at the same time confirmed others in their authority over their priests in their diocese. And he selected candidates for holy orders. And um, one thing that he's uh, maybe best known for um, to this day is that he sent a letter to the Council of Chalcedon in 451 that de dealt so effectively with the doctrine of confirming um, that Jesus was both fully human and fully divine, that it became, um, it was used pretty much word for word in uh, what became Orthodox teaching. As I said, that the, the despite his um, organizational and administrative skills, it was a time of chaos in the Western Empire, and um, there were a succession of invasions. He was able to negotiate with Attila the Hun, who and was who was and was able to convince Attila to withdraw from Italy in return for an annual tribute. But just three years later, the Vandals came, and um, Leo was not able to prevent the pillaging of Rome but he did prevent the destruction of Rome, its burning and the slaughter of its people. And afterwards, he um, worked to repair the damage, um, replace various vessels that had been stolen and uh, rebuild desecrated um, churches and generally restored the, the morale of the Roman people. So today we honor Leo the Great. And that's why, by the way, that he's called the great. With that, let us begin on page 78 in the Book of Common Prayer as usual, quickly moving to page 80. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let the let all the earth keep silence before him. And now being Friday, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Um, page 79. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. 
Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Now turning to page 82, let us say together the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Today's psalm is number a portion of Psalm 69, which begins on page 679. We'll be reading verses 1 to um, 23 and then skipping um, a few verse, verses to go 31 to 38. Uh, but I will, I will mention that as we go along. We'll read it together responsively by whole verse. Save me, O God, for the waters have risen up to my neck. I am sinking in deep mire, and there is no firm ground for my feet. I have come into deep waters, and the torrent washes over me. I have grown weary with my crying. My throat is inflamed. My eyes have failed from looking for my God. Those who hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. My lying foes who would destroy me are mighty. Must I then give back what I never stole? O oh God, you know my foolishness, and my faults are not hidden from you. Let not those who hope in you be put to shame through me, Lord God of hosts. Let not those who seek you be disgraced because of me, O God of Israel. Surely for your sake have I suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also, and became a byword among them. Those who sit at the gate murmur against me, and the drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you. At the time you have set, O Lord. In your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me, and out of the deep waters. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me, neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion, turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me. Because of my enemies, deliver me. You know my reproach, my shame, and my dishonor. My adversities, my adversaries are all in your sight. Reproach has broken my heart, and it cannot be healed. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. For comforters, but I could find no one. They gave me gall to eat, and when I was thirsty, they gave me vinegar to drink. Verse 31. As for me, I am afflicted and in pain. Your help, O God, will lift me up on high. I will praise the name of God in song. I will proclaim his greatness with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord more than an offering of oxen, more than bullocks with horns and hoofs. The afflicted shall see and be glad. You who seek God, your heart shall live. For the Lord listens to the needy, and his prisoners he does not despise. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas and all that moves in them. For God will save Zion and rebuild the cities of Judah. They shall live there and have it in their possession. The children of his servants will inherit it, and those who love his name will dwell therein. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first uh, lesson this morning is from the book of Ezra. Blessed be the Lord, the God of our fathers, who put such a thing as this into the heart of the king, to beautify the house of the Lord which is in Jerusalem, and who extended to me his steadfast love before the king and his counselors, and before the king's mighty officers. I took courage, for the hand of the Lord my God was upon me, and I gathered leading men from Israel to go up with me. Then I proclaimed the fast there at the river of Ahava, that we might humble ourselves before our God to seek from him a straight way for ourselves, our children, and for all our goods. For I was ashamed to ask the king for a band of soldiers and horsemen to protect us against the enemy on our way, since we had told the king, the hand of our God is for good upon all that seek him, and the power of his wrath is against all that forsake him. So we fasted and besought our God for this, and he listened to our entreaty. Then I set apart twelve of the leading priests, Sherebiah, Hashabiah, and ten of their kinsmen with them, and I weighed out to them the silver and the gold and the vessels, the offering for the house of our God, which the king and his counselors and his lords and all Israel were their, their present had offered. I weighed out into their hand 650 talents of silver and silver vessels worth a hundred talents and a hundred talents of gold, 20 bowls of gold worth a thousand derricks and two vessels of fine bright bronze as precious as gold. And I said to them, you are holy to the Lord and the vessels are holy and the silver and the gold are a free will offering to the Lord, the God of your fathers. Guard them and keep them until you weigh them before the chief priests and the Levites and the heads of fathers' houses in Jerusalem, at, in Israel at Jerusalem, within the chambers of the house of the Lord. So the priests and the Levites took over the weight of the silver and the gold and the vessels to bring them to Jerusalem, to the house of our God. Then we departed from the river Ahava on the twelfth day of the first month to go to Jerusalem. The hand of our God was upon us, and he delivered us from the hand of the enemy and from ambushes by the way. We came to Jerusalem, and there we remained three days. On the fourth day, within the house of our God, the silver and the gold and the vessels were weighed into the hands of Merimoth, the priest, son of Uriah. And with him was Elysio, son of Phineas. And with them were the Levites, Josabad, the son of Yeshua, and Noah, Noadiah, the son of Benui. The whole were counted and weighed, and the weight of everything was recorded. At that time, those who had come from captivity, the returned exiles, burnt offered burnt offerings to the God of Israel, 12 bulls for all Israel, 96 rams, 77 lambs, and as a sin offering, 12 he goats. All this was a burnt offering to the Lord. They also delivered the king's commissions to the king's satraps and to the governors of the province beyond the river, and they aided the people and the house of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle. Let us turn to page 86 and say together canticle 10, the second song of Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, 
seed for sowing and bread for eating. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the from the Revelation to John. Then I saw another portent in the heaven, great and wonderful, seven angels with seven plagues, which are the last, for with them the wrath of God is ended. And I saw what appeared to be a sea of glass mingled with fire, and those who had conquered the beast and his image and the number of its name standing beside the sea of glass with harps of God in their hands. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Wonderful, great and wonderful are thy deeds, O Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, O King of all the ages. Who shall not fear and glorify thy name, O Lord? For thou alone art holy. All nations shall come and worship thee, for thy judgments have been revealed. After this I looked. And the temple of the tent of witness in heaven was opened. And out of the temple came the seven angels with the seven plagues, robed in bright, pure linen, and their breasts girded with golden girdles. And one of the four living creatures gave the seven angels seven bowls full of the wrath of God, who lives forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no one could enter the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were ended. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second canticle. Now turning to page 93, let us say together canticle 18, a song to the Lamb. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God, from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so, to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a lonely place. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. As he went ashore, he saw a great throng, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a lonely place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, We have only five loaves here and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of the broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now turning to page 96, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. That your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty and merciful God, it is only by your gift that your faithful people offer you true and laudable service. Grant that we may run without stumbling to obtain your heavenly promises. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our God, grant that your church, following the teaching of your servant Leo of Rome, of Rome may hold fast the great mystery of our redemption and adore the one Christ, true God and true man, neither divided from our human nature nor separate from your divine being. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. And now as we come together to offer our prayers before God, I invite you to add your own. We pray this day for the church, for our Anglican communion and Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury for the Diocese of Aru within the province of the Anglican Church of the Congo. We pray for our own Episcopal Church and Michael, our presiding bishop, for our Diocese of Maine and Thomas, our bishop, for the Congregation of All Saints in Skowhegan, for civil discourse during a time of election, and for our parish of St. John's, our priest James, and for all our people. We pray for the sick, injured, or distressed, for Jay, the Halsapple family, the Order of St. Elizabeth of Hungary, for Barry, Rick, Susan, Fred, and Barbara. We offer continued prayers for Michael, Patrick, Krista, Howard, Bob, Jenny, Michaela, Sarah, Ross, James, and Pion. We pray for our homebound members, including Robert, Krista, Lily, Erling, and Eileen. We pray for the world for peace and goodwill among nations and for peoples and places of violence or oppression and for the many places in our world where there is danger and desperation. We continue to pray especially for the people of Ukraine and the innocent victims of the fighting in Israel and Gaza, for all suffering effects of climate change and of natural disasters, that the peoples of all nations will find ways to cooperate with God's earth in mitigating the climate crisis. We pray for our enemies and for those who wish us harm, and that all people come to understand that the best solution for conflict, whether far or near, is to first love our neighbors as ourselves. We pray for our nation, for the healing of divisions and the celebration of diversity, for the recognition that no single viewpoint on any issue, no matter how important, is without human error, and for all who struggle to change our world and its systems of oppression and exploitation. 
We continue to pray for our own state of Maine as we struggle with the realities of senseless gun violence in our own communities, especially remembering the trauma in Lewiston. We pray for the leaders of our country, state, and community, for Joseph, our president, members of Congress, especially Susan and Angus, our senators, and Shelley and Jared, our representatives, for Janet, our governor, and Rick, our mayor, and for those responsible for administering justice in the courts of this land, that they all may serve our nation and the world with wisdom, civility, and compassion. We pray for our military personnel, especially those of this parish, Sarah, Dylan, Joshua, and Timothy. We offer prayers of thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays during this week. And we pray for the departed, for Peter Hall Zeppel, Brother Donald Paul Martel, and Joshua Devereaux, for the victims of the war in Ukraine, and for those who have died in the fighting in Israel and Gaza for the many victims of gun violence in this country, especially those in Lewiston, and for all who mourn for them. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now turning to page 101, let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now let us say together a prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised to your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to, to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. This brings us to the end of our service this morning. As usual, um, or as always, I rather, we are happy and grateful that you've been able to be with us today and hope that you'll join us again soon perhaps on Monday. We've all made it to the end of another work week anyway. And the weather is neither winter nor um, fall. And we're on the cusp of whatever is coming. Let's just enjoy the moment. With that, may we all know the uh, presence of God in our lives this day and find ways of reflecting that presence out into a needy and hurting world. Again, thank you for being with us. May God bless us all this day. See you soon. <laughs>